technology is the most powerful change in the world of education. Welcome to the video interview series Augmented Reality Based Technology in the Classroom, delivered to you by Clever Books Company. Hello, uh, everyone. Uh, we again today with the video interview series Augmented Reality Based Technology in Education and in the Classroom. And today our guest is Juliana. And uh, hello, how are you? Hello, I'm fine. Thank you so much for being with us today. And I would like to take an opportunity and give you the word to introduce yourself briefly and uh, tell you where you're from and what your background is and uh, briefly say what you do. OK, I'm from Italy. I'm a technology and learning PhD. And uh, during my research, during my PhD, I developed a format for uh, museums. And this format is called Emotional Mapping of a Museum Augmented Places. This is an interactive format for museums, archaeological parks, and art galleries. And um, uh, I, have, I have also been involved in e-moderating different online courses at the University Kafoska Rio Venice and the University Politecnica delle Marche have used e-learning environments integrating learning objects with mobile devices in order to create unique learning experiences where participants interact in a place at the same time authentic and augmented by the use of a different media. Currently, I'm studying and using virtual and augmented reality systems useful in treating mental health. Have published scientific articles on the themes of learning, augmented and virtual reality, virtual and augmented learning environments, and virtual and augmented reality in mental health treatment. That, that sounds fantastic. That's great. <laughs> And uh, what we'll Thank do, you. we'll put all the links to your work if you would like to share with you, with listeners yes. uh, under the uh, podcast uh, and uh, video interview, and uh, then listeners can directly come and view your work. Can you tell me a, a little bit more about what you're, you've done so much already in, in the topic of augmented reality in learning? And can you tell me a little bit about your professional opinion on the use of augmented reality-based technology in the classroom and how it can benefit the kids and as well as teachers in preparing the lessons? Okay. Uh, first of all, in my opinion, uh, augmented reality in education now is uh, strategic and, uh, and proper. And uh, currently, I'm in the process of editing this, uh, uh, this publication entitled the Virtual and Augmented Reality in Mental Health Treatment. And um, this publication will be published uh, this year, at the end of this year. And... Uh, mm, in, the, in this moment, I'm teaching um, an autistic student mm -hmm. and I'm using with her augmented reality to, to teach her. And uh, the other experience I want to tell you about is an experience with uh, high school oh. students using mm -hmm. augmented reality and the virtual reality in the classroom. That's uh, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I start with, a, with a, my experience uh, now, okay? Yes, go ahead. That's, that's always great, you know, to hear real case studies of how it's used and uh, share your experience. Please do. Okay, now uh, about the, the use of a virtual and documented reality in mental health treatment and for uh, special need education. Uh, now different organizations have uh, been involved in the study and the realization of uh, virtual reality and augmented reality solutions to be used both as a therapy and as a support for these uh, disabilities and uh, also to teach the students. Uh, currently, I'm teaching a girl, a 12-year-old girl. This is uh, an autistic student, and uh, I use a virtual reality with her. Uh, at the beginning, she was not interested in uh, using uh, an headset, a virtual reality headset. If I, I showed her things that she can't experience, for example, lion, 
uh, a lion or sharks uh, and so on. But she is a bit more involved when I show her something she's interested in, for example, balloons. And uh, she, I, I observed her, she wanted to understand how does it work, the headset. So she opened the headset to take pictures and, uh, and uh, for, this season, for this reason I have prepared specific videos for her. In these videos she can see her, um, her laboratories, uh, for example a kitchen laboratory to show um, a kitchen laboratory with her schoolmates. And now she really enjoys the content because she knows what she sees. She can describe something based on her experience and based on the videos. And she can create uh, her content too. Um, in fact, we have this laboratory for special need students. And uh, uh, she can see again and again the laboratory uh, after, the, after it. And uh, when she watches it, uh, she dances because um, I have used some uh, special music for her. And uh, she looks in every direction. This is a, a difficult thing for an autistic student. And this is for the, uh, the special needs student. And the other experience with uh, virtual reality is an experience with a high school class of 23 students invited to use augmented or a virtual reality to create their learning content. They are about 16 years old, attending a technological institute, so they, they are studying information technology. And uh, they generally use, in Italy, in Italy this classroom is, they generally use their smartphones to connect to the internet, to search for information, to communicate and to play games. Nevertheless, when these students have to study a subject matter, for example, history or geography, they chiefly use the traditional paper books and, uh, or uh, school desktop computers. They need a clear model to improve their study method and to use the new learning augmented and virtual media. The basic idea of this learning experience is to create a few paper notes, a short printed document uh, augmented with uh, uh, augmented reality or virtual reality to access further content for this student. And uh, they can use their personal tools, for example, their smartphones or tablet and, and apps. And to, to see the virtual reality, they can use, uh, for example, Google Cardboard or similar cheap assets. The subject matter selected to implement this immersive experience uh, is uh, information technology system design. So students uh, during this experience are encouraged to create uh, their content and to collaborate uh, in a team. The experience mm -hmm. is fully evaluated using tests and direct observation. The aim is to observe the impact of augmented mobile learning and to demonstrate that augmented reality and virtual reality material may represent a new communication object adequate, uh, proper to teach future students. The, result, the results are positive and educators consider the trial as a starting point for further developments. The most important results are uh, number one, the students can create their learning material, their learning material using uh, virtual reality and documented reality environments. Number two, they can construct their learning material work in a small group of peers. Number three, they can choose a specific role because they work in a team, useful to acquire a self-confident behavior and develop autonomy. For example, the leader or the, the, the person who search for material and so on. And number four, they have fun and uh, while they are working or studying. Number five, they can improve their creative mind. This is a concept by Gartner. Number six, they develop new uh, ICT skills. And number seven, educators, this is important, after the trial, use the outputs to offer guidance to school children with special needs. And um, uh, we, uh, me, the other educators, teachers, uh, 
think that these new augmented learning objects may attract the last generation of learners and uh, may be a very flexible um, tool for different needs. And this is the, the second experience. Thank you very much for sharing your experience. It's fantastic. And um, you've mentioned that you already used uh, some of applications for augmented and virtual reality. Would you be able to share some resources that you've used? Yes. Um, the outputs or the tools? Uh, the tools, uh, the applications that work the best for okay. your experience. The, um, the first phase of our experience with these high school students was to give them the opportunity to select the best tools for them. This experience was reported in a paper, so I can share the paper. <laughs> okay. And they, they were divided in groups and they, we, were, we had four groups. And Two groups uh, choose to uh, choose to use um, Orasma. Now is um, HP Reveal, a, a very simple tool to create experience using a virtual reality. This is also a free tool. They don't have to pay or to um, to ask for educational license. And uh, one group um, chooses another instrument. Uh, um, I, I think the name is uh, augmented. And uh, to create uh, uh, something in augmented reality that they later printed using a, a 3D printer. And the fourth group chose to, um, to use uh, um, virtual reality. Uh, with an headset, a Google Cardboard headset, and uh, they created 3D, uh, 3D visit of their laboratories. And this output was used to uh, give guidance to uh, new students, especially uh, special needs students. Uh, I can share the, the paper where there is all the report of the tools that we used. Yes, I think it would be very yeah. beneficial because that way you can have a look and uh, read themselves and probably gain even more useful information to what we can cover today just in a short uh, video interview. Okay. So that would be very appreciated. It would be linked to uh, your video broadcast as well. And uh, for, to create uh, uh, videos for uh, virtual reality, we, we used uh, V3660, uh, a simple app <laughs> to create videos. And can I ask you, how, who chose uh, those um, resources and tools? Was it your choice or um, you, you got some information ahead of time of which resources are better to choose? Uh, what was, how was the choice made? Uh, the choice was uh, in the in the experience of the high school. The choice was um, uh, made by the students because we give them different uh, input. For example, there is, there are a list of tools, and then they had to decide in group which one they want to use. First of all, um, they they have they had to use uh, free tools. Okay, because uh, in, in a school, okay, free or educational tools, and uh, to, um, they uh, decided in the group, uh, the leader, the the other people working with uh, him or her, had to decide which one was uh, um, adequate for them, and to show the outputs to the other classroom after the experience. Okay, thank you. And I have another question for you. What are the challenges that you actually came across in, uh, in implementing this in such small focus groups? Mm -hmm. I think the, the first one is interoperability because uh, teachers want to reuse learning objects, want to reuse the outputs. But sometimes if you create an experience with one tool, uh, you um, it is possible that this experience, this learning object, can't be used with other tools. 
in, a, in, a, in other experiences. The reuse of learning objects is a problem because this is a new technology and uh, we need to experience more and more these tools to choose which one could be more adequate for us, for our, for our, for our students. Uh, basically trying different tools and trying it out and see which one fits better with uh, with the circumstances and uh, uh -huh. within the lesson plan. To reuse for future experiences, to reuse the learning objects, it is difficult because when you create using a tool, the, the learning objects sometimes became obsolete and you can't use it in the future. Okay. Uh, okay. The, the following year. And uh, another challenge is uh, the hard work for educators, for the students, for the teachers, for the researchers, because uh, also because uh, these uh, experiences are very new, uh, almost in Italy, and and so uh, it is a hard work. Um, at the beginning, we uh, observed that these students. Um, to, to study, use uh, traditional methods, paper books, uh, desktop computers, uh, and uh, we, we have to um, show them how they can use uh, new, uh, newer technologies like uh, augmented reality, virtual reality, uh, headset, uh, because they think these tools are only for gaming perceived in a little bit in a different manner, I would say. And uh, can you tell me just in general your professional opinion, uh, what would actually, what three aspects would influence the decision to bring uh, such innovative technologies like augmented or virtual reality to the classroom? For special needs, it is important to use this tool because sometimes these tools are um, uh, a mean to communicate something. Uh, it is difficult to communicate with a special need student, but if you use uh, something like this tool, like this uh, virtual reality, like um, a video or uh, an headset, I can show her many times the same experiences so she can learn. And the, another reason to use these tools is because uh, they are adequate for future students, for the last generation of learners. And uh, another reason is because uh, they are fun for the students and um, they can create something. They can create uh, their content, for example, and they can show this content to the, the peer, to the other students. It's very good. It explains, you know, uh, what influences you to try those technologies and why you want to bring them in mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, share not only within the teaching environment, but also, you know, when working with the kids, mostly the special needs, like you said. And it would be mm -hmm. interesting to uh, probably hear uh, at the end of our interview is uh, what your um, one or two suggestions will be for teachers that are not using it yet, and uh, what do you think they should look for uh, when they're choosing applications for use or um, you know just wanting to try it out what would you suggest mm -hmm. application easy to use for their students uh, for example application which are not very difficult to understand to use to share with the other peers a student something that should be very immediate and uh, another thing for educators, for teachers, is that they have to um, tell the students uh, many times how to use the tools uh, for learning. Because sometimes they think it's only um, it's fun or a game or, or something not important for their learning. So in a sense, explain the reason why it's brought into uh, as part of the curriculum and used as part of the classroom learning. Yes, exactly. Something else, we choose to work uh, using a team, using a small group of students working in team. Uh, so each team can create uh, autonomy. Uh, 
and they can choose the best tool for them. So different tools can be experienced by the whole classroom. Uh, if a group choose, I don't know, uh, Aurasma, another group, another tool, another group, uh, another tool, then they can share the ideas and, uh, and use more tools. Well, uh, thank you very much, Juliana. It's been uh, wonderful to have you around, and so uh, thank you so much for you. sharing your experience. I think it's very important uh, and will be definitely valued for teachers and for other educators who are already using the augmented reality within the classroom and for those who are just uh, planning to introduce it. And uh, as I mentioned before, uh, all the links will be under the video interview and you can uh, read the article and the papers written by Juliana, learn a little bit more about it. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Everything changes.